Yes, sir, baby, on the Radar Radio. Yo, special guest in the building. His album is on the way. Jacques is in the building here with me today. Welcome. What's up, bro? Welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. It was funny because we was just talking about, um, so Tusi was here back in November. Mm -hmm. It was before you guys did the record on his, uh, I think it was like Girls of Girls of Tusi. Yeah, it was like yeah. a little three-pack situation that he did. Um, and he was giving you your flowers here. That's my dog. I, I posted a video. Yeah, you posted because we were like, we were like, you were like, where do I recognize you from? It was from that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tusi, my dog, though. That was that was super dope what he did up here. Right, cause I, it was funny because Tusi and I were even talking a little bit after that about how like giving people their flowers or credit or just you know showing people love is it really doesn't cost anything. And it's free. Do shit like that. It's free. It costs zero dollars to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I don't think everybody know that, but it's free. You can keep it real. <laughs> you know what I think it is? I mean, at least here in New York, I feel like people are afraid to kind of show love or whatever to be perceived as like, oh, like, you know, people in the comments be like, oh, you're dig right in this person or this, this, and that. But it's really just like... You can't get caught up in the net. Yeah. You got to just keep it real. You know what I'm saying? And that's just... I don't even know. Like, yeah, of course people say what they say, but you got to just know who you are. Mm. Ain't nothing wrong with being real and showing love. That's that's actually dope. I agree. Yeah, it's actually dope. I always have my interviews with saying, like, love and support are free. It is. You know what I'm saying? Go show the man some love. Go show the man some support. Both of those things are free. As long as they ain't disrespecting you. Right. Do you feel like you've been, you've gotten, like, the flower, do you feel like you've been getting flower, like, the flowers from your, from your peers? Obviously, Tusi, you know, we saw that, but do you feel like you get, you get those a lot, or? Um, not a lot, but sometimes, of course, like, you know, I ain't gonna lie, like, they might not do it publicly, but I do actually get a lot of flowers when people see me in person. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, they actually show love. I had a lot of people, like a lot of the top dogs, they always be like, Jacqui, man, you know, we love you, bro. You need to do, <laughs> man, we want some of that stuff like how you did on Mood. Like, they always go back to projects and songs they like and stuff like that. So they show love. But as far as like getting on interviews and stuff like that, like Tusi was probably like, besides Chris Brown, Tusi was probably like the only only other artist. And Tank, Tank said something about me too. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw when Tank said something On the Drink like Champs. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they keep it real. I got a couple people that always keep it real about me. You know what I'm saying? Well, I want to give you your flowers because like Thank even you, when bro. I see like shit like you did the record with Enchanting. Yeah, I fuck with Enchant. With I lo I love that record. Thank you, bro. Um, like when I see stuff like that too, it's like you know, it's like you when you look at you as an artist and even like you working with younger artists, newer artists like her, it's like he's still doing it. You know what I'm saying? Because you're at a level where it's like you don't have to work with someone like that, but you do work with someone like yeah. that. And you guys make and you know you you give help give her a boost too. Oh yeah, she dope though. She can really sing. That's what's so dope about her. Like you know, you look at her, she like a little thug, but she can sing. She can blow. Right. You see like the tattoos and shit. You like, is she a rapper? Yeah, like what you on? But then when she sing, you like, oh you soft for real. Oh you hard. Yeah, she dope. I, she a cool person too. I think it was um she did the from the block right, and that was like mm -hmm. the first time I ever really saw her. And I, I clicked on the vid. I'm like, oh, she better like, cause you know she's ten seventeen. So I'm yeah. like, oh, she better spit right. Yeah. And I clicked. I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Out of yeah, her. I actually, I actually did the record before I had seen her in person. Mm. So when I seen her in person, I was just like, okay, this gotta be enchanting, cause I had heard people like describing and stuff like that. And I told her, like, she was like, oh yeah, we did the record. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, we did do the record, and we end up linking up for the video shoot, mm. and you know, just becoming cool after that. Uh. I went down to a listening party when they when they uh, premiered our video. She had like a party in Atlanta. It was super dope. You know, a couple other artists. So I show her love, you know. And of course, she told me, of course, she's been like, you know, listening to my music for a long time. So that's always dope to hear, you know, from people. So shout out to Enchanting. She shout out to Enchanting, yeah. Because yeah. like, like I said, you wouldn't expect her to sing like that. But then you, you see, then you actually see it. Like, I, I didn't even know that y'all didn't meet before y'all did the vid. That's nah, crazy. Nah, we didn't. No, no, no. We met before we did the vid. But, okay. But before we did the actual, the actual record, I didn't. I didn't get to meet her. We talked, but I didn't see her. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know who she, I didn't really, I wasn't familiar with who she was yet. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And then you met her, you're like, oh, now this all makes sense. Yeah, somebody you. hit me like, well, we got a record we need you to get on. I'm like, bet, send me the record. The record was hard. That was the record. I was like, oh, I got to get on. And I did my verse probably like a couple days later. It came out crazy. And I got to say, like, I, I was like, I was like, this is like one of my like favorite R&B records of the year, too. I'm not capping. Like, I actually had the text messages with her label to prove it. I'm like, yo, this record is hard. Send me the clean shit. I spawned that shit back on my radio. So Thank I, was you, like, bro. I was like, this shit is fire. It feel good. Yeah. Yeah, it feel good. It feel like one of them R&B records that they used to play at the club. Like, when it come on, you can get up and dance. Yeah, it's one of those. And I think the video kind of set the tone for the record. You actually get to see what we want the record to be like, what, what we wanted to feel like. You know, we actually painted a picture with the video. Shout out to the directors. They did a good job at doing it. Right. And my last thing about that record was just like, uh, and the, you mentioned the video. I liked how it felt like an early 2000s R&B yeah. style video. Even with how she like walks in the club and then yeah. how you come in. I was like... Even with the cameos, like she showed, uh, 
She had a couple people in a video, like, you know, old school cameos, how they used to show people. Mm-hmm. It was dope. Yeah, it's Speaking of like creative stuff, um, I also wanted to <laughs> give you a little bit of flowers for your from the block shit from oh, the yeah. yacht. Oh yeah, I was, that, that was the first time you feel me. We did it from the yacht. Yeah, appreciate that, bro. And I wasn't even gonna do it. My partner made me do it. Oh, you were? Nah, he was like, man, you got to do it, bro. Like, is he gonna let you do the one on the yacht? Like, this is gonna be the first time y'all gonna do it. It was my birthday. So I was trying to just have a good time. I wasn't trying to work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But everybody was like, bro, just do it. You ain't got to do nothing but just get up there and do your song. I'm like, that. We made it a vibe. It was fun, though. That, first of all, shout out to AZ and from the blog. Was yeah. that, um, so it wasn't your idea for the yacht. That was his idea? Well, nah, it was, it was, it was, it was like my team idea, you know, because okay. I was, I had the, I had the yacht for my birthday and they wanted me to do the from the block, but I'm like, man, I don't want to do it regular. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. and they was like, bro, just do it on the yacht. He was like, he going to make it from the yacht. I like that, and that's just how we did it. I feel like AZ is going to hit me if, I, if I'm wrong here, because I know he would, but I feel like that was like the first one, because ever since then, they started doing like, you know, Chris Brown did From the Bat Cave, mm-hmm. um, uh, 600 Breezy did like From the Cemetery. Um, I think that might have been like the first one that I saw that was kind of like from the, and it was just like a, a place, not like a city or a specific thing, but like a specific location, like from the yacht. Yeah, from the yacht. I think that might, and I could be wrong, but I think that was at least the first one that I saw that was like I think that was creative like a, in that sense. I think that was the first time they did it like that. I could be wrong too, I don't know, but. Yeah. He'll call us out. <laughs> yeah, he definitely gonna let us know. Yeah, he'll call us out. He'll be like, he'll be like, nah, I've been done shit like that. <laughs> but I thought that that was fire because yeah. it was just like, I was like, okay, cool. Like, you you kind of, oh, from the BFB, the Pac Man did from the pool. Yeah, like the donuts and that. shit like that. Yeah, that's all I see um, that. But I thought that that was cool how, like, if you, if, if that was, you were the first one to do that, hopefully you kind of started that shit. Yeah, hopefully I was, though. Trendsetter. Trendsetter shit, right? Yeah, all the time. So you've been uh, dropping a couple, you dropped a couple EPs this year um, that kind of like all, Accumulated in like the baby maker EP kind of. I did. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's like some label stuff. Mm, okay. I ain't even. You feel me? I ain't dropped the album since 2019. Okay. So that was just so like these little EPs that just been dropping, just been. I don't know. I guess stuff. they just try and get the streams over some. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. You feel me? I don't know. But so you yourself, you're just like I've been chilling. Yeah, I've been chilling. I okay. dropped a mixtape uh last year called Exit 68. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I dropped that last year. Um, of course, I got. I've been dropping a couple singles, you know, left and right, couple singles. I dropped not just anybody with Future, put in work with Chris Brown. I dropped uh, Freak Is Me with Mulatto. I got Say Yeah out right now. Yeah, That's actually the leading yeah. single for my new album, Say Yeah. Mm. So I just been dropping a few little. Because I noticed they put some of those on like those EPs. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I ain't gonna lie, and I had seen the, the baby making EP, but I didn't really pay no attention because I'm like, eh, I didn't really do this. You're focused on the album. Yeah, I just always focus on what I'm. What I'm creating, you know what I'm saying? Right, because you've been tweet, you've been, you know, I, I've been, I was scrolling on your Twitter for a while, bro. So you, I be t- tweeting like a motherfucker. No, you do be tweeting, and I got a bunch of tweets here, nothing bad. Though. Nah, nah, you good, <laughs> shit. But I've been, uh, I was scrolling for a while, and you've been talking about this project for like a while, and I think like the, where I wanted to start with the project was one of the first things that I saw you said is like, with this project, you said that you really wanted to tell your full story. And what and why I want to ask that is because I feel like you know we've we've seen interviews with you. Mm-hmm. I, I was there for a few interviews with you at Power. I've seen like other interviews that you've done. What do you mean by with this that you want to actually tell your full story this time around with this project? What well, it's more so it's more so well from my intro of this album. It's kind of like I'm kind of like taking you back to where I started to where I am now. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's kind of like a thank you. Kind of like a thank you from the intro to everybody that's been supporting me. So I kind of walked you through my career, starting from 14 years old all the way to 28 years old. Um, but more so what I'm really trying to capture from the people, I'm working on a documentary actually to go with the album. Okay. And I feel like that's what's going to actually tell the story. So it's more so the documentary more than the music. Because the music is just, it's just great R&B music. You know what I'm saying? I'm not necessarily storytelling, but in some of the records I am. Like storytelling about my life, so... You just got to wait to see. It's like a movie. Like, the whole album like a movie, and I'm literally painting a movie to actually go along with it so you can see. Right. So, yeah. the, so the documentary is actually, like, kind of like the movie. The documentary the documentary is, like, the, well, it's called Sincerely For You. That's the name of the album. Right. The album is called Sincerely For You, and um, the documentary is called Sincerely For You. So when I say Sincerely For You, it's Sincerely For Everybody, like, along the way. Like, no matter how we turned out, you know, I appreciate you because everybody's, like, a stepping stone to help. You know, whether you was, like, a girl I was talking to, one of my friends, you know, uh, the fans, DJs, you know what I'm saying, the labels, 
everybody, you know, the streets, everybody, you know, it's just a big thank you. You know what I'm saying? We just finna tell the whole story. I know a lot of people, first time was seeing me was like the king of R&B. And, you know, they probably kind of rubbed them wrong. They probably didn't understand why I was feeling how I felt and why I feel like I feel. But I feel like once they see the documentary, it'll all make sense. Mm-hmm. I feel like everything is just starting to make sense. I feel like it's just going to make people gravitate to me, like make mm-hmm. people really, really love me. Like all the people that love me now, I feel like it's going to make them love me more. And everybody that didn't have no love for me, they're going to be like, I got love for them. Mm-hmm. It's dope. Mm-hmm. I've, been, I've been filming since I was nine years old. Oh, so you've been having like all this, so you got like all this footage from like I got, way back then yeah. to like all the way now yeah. type shit. Yeah. That's pretty fire. And all that's going to be in the documentary. Yeah, and I'm going to just show like, you know, I'm going to just show the come up, show family, you know, how important family is and how how big it is to like believe like you could make it happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where we from, like, I was kind of like, I wasn't the first one to make it where I'm from because I think the first stars we seen was like Travis Porter. From the east side, I think they 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 blew up first. But it was like I was one of the people where it's like the dream wasn't that close back then. You know how now you could just get on the internet and you could just do something and then it wasn't that close then. It was like you had to really go get it. So I'm gonna just show you that story, like that side of things. Like my mama always been so dedicated to me. You're gonna see that, you know, with them. But I got sisters too, like you just gonna see everything, like why I feel how I feel, like wh- why I am who I am. Like you gonna really see like the industry didn't make me who I am. You know what I'm saying? I am who I am because of where I'm from and my family. You dig? So it's like, it's just gonna be great. I just know people gonna love it. And they just gonna feel me. Cause I come from the same place they come from. And it's really like an inspiring story. Like to show you dreams come true for real. Mm-hmm. That's really what it is. It's like, you can, anything is possible. And power of the tongue is real. I literally spoke my whole life into existence. Like, for real, for real. Even me signing the cash money. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was, I always said I, I was going to do it. And I did it. You feel me? Everything I said I was going to do, bro. Like, down to the, like, when I used to be like, man, I want Chris Brown to know my music, bro. I just want brother to know who I am. And I ended up living with him when I was 18. You know what I'm saying? And now we like brothers. You feel me? Mm. A lot of stuff, bro. A lot of dope stuff, though, that people going to get to see. What, is there a particular thing that you're most excited for people to see from it? Yeah, I'm excited for them to see me tell them what I was going to be when I was young. Like, I've been said who I was going to be. Like, I literally told you. So I'm just excited for people to be like, dang, he had that much confidence that young. Like, he knew who he was going to be. I used to tell people, I ain't got a plan B. I got a plan A. You know what I'm saying? Real right. talk. In high school, I tatted my neck. I know not in high school, in middle school. You remember back in the day, they used to be like, if you get tattoos, you can't get a job. I instantly X myself out of that picture. Eighth grade, I tatted my neck. Pew. Then I tatted my hands right after. Eighth grade. That's how old those tats are? Oh, yeah. I got Fear God when I was 13. Wow. Yeah. When I was 13. I got Quee on my neck with some music notes. But I had hair so I could let my hair down and hide it if I needed to. Smart. Yeah, you, you smart. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't want people to be like, well, your mama let you get a tattoo on your neck. I'm like, nah, I could cover it when I needed to. But for the most part, I was showing it. Everybody was going to get tats on their arm and stuff like that. I'm like, no, I'm hitting the neck and the hands. I ain't getting no job. I'm going to make it. Singing. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I and that's determined. all in there. Yeah, everything. Wow. Yeah, everything. Everything. My teachers used to help me. Everything. Like I had a whole like where I'm from. Everybody wanted me to make it. Like it was like you gonna make it type mm. thing. Like they weren't gonna let me get in no trouble because I used to hang at the barbershop every day. So you know when you hang at the barbershop every day, the OGs like they not gonna let you get into no trouble. No matter what's going on, if you the one, they gonna make sure you get to where you need to go. That's how the hood used to be. I don't know how the hood is now. But I know back then it was like if you were somebody special, they was going to protect you and make sure that you got to where you need to go. And I feel like that was like who I was. I was one of them, like that they was going to make sure I got to where I needed to go. Do you go back often since you were just kind of— Yeah, like I still making... go get my hair cut in the barbershop. Oh, for I just, back, I just back left East it. Yeah, I'm, yeah, and on the east side, I just left it. Shout out my cousin, Jig. He just shaped me up when we came out <laughs> here. You know what I'm saying? I still go to the barbershop, even though I could have him come to the crib. Yeah. I've been wanting to feel that energy lately. Like, I've been wanting to go back to where I'm from lately. Like, just pull up, you know, feel the vibes. It's been love, too. You know what I'm saying? It's been love. You, you know, know, we, you know guys, now I was going to say, when you can go back to where you're from, when you make it to this level, a lot of people can't. Even though I don't feel, I know everybody don't love me, but it's enough love there to, for me to feel all right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, it's like, also, when you reach this level, sometimes, not all artists, but like, you know, an artist might get to a level and then not go back, and then they start kind of losing that essence of, like, who they it's are. who they are. Yeah. You feel me? You got to keep that. That's why I go back. Because I need to, I like to remind myself of who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I like to go back and just go get me one of them peach uh, peach lemonade drinks from the wing spot. Give me some wings. Just 
go in Metro. I ain't even finna buy no phone. Just go talk to the Metro PCS lady. Just feel where I'm from. Feel me? Go shoot the basketball. Go order a double cheeseburger. Don't even eat it. You know what I'm saying? Just from McDonald's. Just feel it. Go go to churches. Just order some. Just feel it. You know what I'm saying? Don't even eat church no more. But I just need a piece of church chicken. I need to feel something right quick. You know what I'm saying? So vibe. I've been putting myself way back in the vibe. I still go to the, I've been going to the beauty salon to, um, when my lady do my hat, been pulling up on her. You feel me? She right in East Atlanta where my grandma used to run everything at. So it's just a feeling that I've been getting back to, like, just like, Kui. You know what I'm saying? Like, my grandma ain't never called me Jacquees in her life. You know what I'm saying? It was only Kui. Like, if she used to call me Jacquees, I used to get mad. Like, hey, what you calling me that for? Like, don't call me that. Like, it used to rub my skin wrong. You feel me? So I just been wanting to feel that energy. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy because whenever people become close to me, they always call me Kui. It's like the Jacquees leaving, it just become Kui. Yeah. yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I just left my label, everybody saying Kui. I'm like, damn. I guess, we, I guess we friends. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It'd be cool though, but yeah, man, I just been getting back to my roots. You did. I love that. You mentioned um, that this documentary would also kind of explain to people the, the king of R&B stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Did you felt it like, extra, like also important that you address that in there as well like kind of give the people like you know the essence of like why you said those things or why you came out saying that stuff too well yeah i mean it's so much people don't know about me but it's like it's a whole nother game now like you know i come from live mixtapes i come from the underground like i come from where we excited to get a countdown on live mixtapes like we just want to be at the top getting a countdown and that and it dropping we just trying to get the high score yeah. Like, they don't know nothing about that. You know what I'm saying? They don't know nothing about printing their CDs up and like, hey, I'm Jacquees. This is my CD. You feel me? That's my poster right there, too. I'm going to be performing. Come check me out. It's all about the gram now. I did the footwork. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really put in work, work, work. You got to think. I, don't, I I dropped my first album in 2000. When was that? I signed a cash money in 2014. I dropped my first album in 2018. You know what I'm saying? 2000, <laughs> 2018. But that was like the game. To some people, that was my introduction in the game. So I wanted to be best new artist, everything. You got to think I never won best new artist. You feel me? Man, I, done, I came, out of, came out of the time where it was new artist, but I've done did so much in my past that I never got credit for. Ten mixtapes, R&B. That's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole lot of work. Like, and they really albums. We just had to call them mixtapes because we ain't had no record deal. We couldn't sell them. We had to give it away for free. Right, like you that piff shit like that. Stuff like that. Like when you really becoming, like when you really seeing what's going on, like the streets telling you, you like that's what's happening. It ain't just people on the internet. It's the internet too, though. Because a lot of mixtapes was on the internet. You know, YouTube, we was using all them platforms. That piff. Uh, it was another one too. Um, you said that piff live mix? Yeah, it was a... Uh, or was it just that piff and my mixtape? Live mixtape. It was, it was my mixtapes too, wasn't it? My mixtape. Yeah. That was at the end though. Yeah. But just all that work, bro. It's like I, I put in a lot of work, and people gonna get to see it. And I think they gonna, once they see all the work that I did, it'll kind of make them be like, okay, I see why he said what he said, why he feel like that for his generation. You know. Yeah. I see. I kind of feel them a little bit. And even if they don't feel me, they'll end up feeling me by the end of my career. Anyway, you know, I ain't done working. I got so much work to do. <laughs> You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like if you already did ten mixtapes, imagine what you know you're gonna do with the rest of your. Yeah, and this too. just and this is my third album I'm working on now. Right. Yeah, this album number three. I'm 28. You know, I dropped my first album when I was 23, mm. but I dropped my first mixtape when I was like 15, officially like 16. But I had a little EP out called I Am Jacquees when I was 15. Right, and like the um, so I actually so I found this out today when we did the interview, and this will come out after you announce the song. Um, the next single off of it is with uh, Black and Summer Walker. Yeah, shout out to them. Shout out to them. Mm-hmm. Um, the record's called Tell Me It's Over. Yep, Tell Me It's Over. Um, why Why did you want this record to be the, uh, I guess, like uh, the next record to lead into the project? Because uh, Summer Walker hot. I'm just playing. <laughs> when Summer is hot, she on fire right now. But um, And you got a, you got a couple tracks with her yeah, at yeah. this point. But uh, I just feel like we should, we should use it leading into the album because... Uh, it's a dope record, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a it's a really dope record, and it's a slow R and B song. Mm. You know, it's not like up tempo or nothing like that. It's really slow R and B, but it's a great, great R and B song. That's the thing. Like it's a real R and B song, so I didn't want to stray away from that. And uh, shout out to Summer because when she did the record, she was telling me like, man, this sound like some of that old Jacquees stuff. You know, this sound like this sound like what people want to hear. So that made me feel good about it. You know, so 
that's what we going with. And shout out to Black. You know, that's my homie. He on there too. He killed it. Both of them killed it. So big shout out to them. It's, it's gonna be like a great Atlanta record shit too. Huh? Some real Atlanta shit too. Yeah, facts. All us from the A. You know what I'm saying? Everybody from Atlanta. I ain't even think about that. Yeah, that's not, I thought that's why I used. You know, I in my head I'm like, okay, I see what he kind of doing with this record. Now I really, like, I really how it came together. I was trying to put him on two different records, mm. and uh, they manager Justice hit me like, Quee, we should um, put him on the same record to try to make the moment bigger. And I thought it made sense. I was like, cool, let's do it. I know when I usually reach out to Summer, she usually do the records for me. This was my first time reaching out to Black for a record. Mm. But I know all his homeboys and people, like, we all from the same side of town. We from the east side. So yeah. I knew how to get in contact with his people, and they plugged me to him and stuff like that. So that's how we made that work. I love that. And I just love that it's, like, three artists from Atlanta. Just I didn't even peep that, dog. You just called that. I would have been saying that on all my interviews. <laughs> Real time. <laughs> you should have been, yo, bro. You on this whole New York trip, you could have been using this as like, That's yeah, at, we all big Atlanta, Atlanta Rick, yeah. big Atlanta record, yeah, right. Three Atlanta artists, R and B, slow joint. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking that, bro. So when you see me in my next interview, when I say that, just don't, don't trip. No, nah, I ain't go trip. Well, I mean, For if sure. that interview somehow comes out before yeah. this interview, I'm a trip. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. like, I said it, I said it first. Yeah. But you know what? But I'm excited for that record. I'm excited for the album. Yeah, thank and it's you, funny because like I'm when I go through your Twitter, right, and I was scrolling, you was man, you've been spitting on there. So a few things that you said, right, mm -hmm. and I, honestly, I feel like people need to go on your Twitter. They need some like some free games, some inspirational quotes. Yeah. Shit they going through like one thing you said was everybody don't want to see you happy. You'll find out later. And I feel like that that comes from a place of like very much as like being in this industry for the amount of time that you've been in too. You know I've been saying? in the industry since I was 14, but it's like, this is a different side of the industry now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like levels to the industry. But when I say everybody don't want to see you happy, it's like some people say they want to see you happy, but not really. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't really want to. It's like a backhanded. Thing. Yeah, it's like, you don't really want to see me happy. Like if I fail tomorrow, you'll be, you'll be somewhere giggling when you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you did. I'll be people. I'll be watching people like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Something else you said. You were like, if you could write love letters, you could write love songs. Now, that's a fact. I like half agree with you on this because Why? it's like because you don't think because what if someone could write a great love letter but like it, it just you can't translate every love letter into a song or do you think that you can? I think you can. Like I think like just say like if you knew how to write good love letters, right? Right. But you like damn, I can't make it a song. You just ain't got. You might not have no rhythm or no melody. Mm. But then I come read the paper and just. Sing it and make it. You like, damn. That's because you're Jacquees. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you can make it, but like, <laughs> I'm saying, I think people that got that got that know music. Yeah. Because you got to think. I believe every female could write a song if she really tried a love song. You got to think about girls. So like, girls so like in they feelings, like in they they in like they know what's going on. So I feel like they knew they always knew how to write. Like I knew a lot of females in school. They always was good at like English. Like writing yeah. and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like they could put that into the music. I always thought like that. I always thought like every girl could probably write a song. Cause I come from like when I was in school, we used to write letters. I wasn't no big letter person, cause I used to want nobody to see what I was writing. You feel what I'm saying? But I used to get a lot of letters. You feel what I'm saying? And yeah. I used to be like, damn, this sound like a song for real. You know what I'm saying? Like it, used to be, it was dope. Yeah, it's just I don't know. It's something about the way that women write. Huh? Something just about the way that they write. Yeah, that shit was different. Like I used to get real letters, like yes or no type shit. <laughs> I like how he's. I like how he's just like openly on on the show. Like, yeah, I got mad love letters in high school. Now it was middle school. We ain't get no letters in high school. By that oh, time, okay, everybody texting shit, like pull up type shit. The texting shit just really ain't. It ain't the same. We was T nine texting though. People don't need not to do that. What's T nine texting? Like we was texting like well, you got to go through all the letters and then go to the next one. Oh, it's like when with the razor, like the razor phones and shit like that. Like the old metro, like yeah, yeah, yeah. like. Like that way. I had the I had the razor when I was I, I'm 26, so I had it when I was 11. Damn, you younger than me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. What's up, little bro? <laughs> he said, "What's up?" I'm little, an OG bro. out here, bro. <laughs> I, <laughs> mean, you, I mean, hey, you kind of are. I ain't gonna lie. But <laughs> like in the, in the best way, in the best way possible. But I remember having the razor, and I remember like it, being 11, like flipping through the the things, trying to text a shorty, and it was just like. Yeah, I had the uh, oh, after bro. the metro. Then I went to the uh, the I had the BlackBerry. And I had the slide jump, the razor. I think they had the slide oh, um, razor. The one that flipped. No, not the razor. What the it was sidekick, 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 right? Yeah, I had the little slide jump. Sidekick. Yeah, I could text faster. Yeah, not sure. in my Puerto Rican household. My folks was like, hell no, you're not getting that shit. They're yeah, like, you're going to get this basic flip phone. You're going to be able to make the one-way call so you could come home and go to school. That's it. <laughs> they was not fucking with me. Yeah. But I remember at one point, I, I almost bought one of those sidekicks. Yeah, off, it was easy, bro. 
Yeah. And it would drip. Like, you know, you pull up and slide it to the side. They're like, damn, he got, got something going on. And also, like, you got to you gotta give it up to Sidekick for their contribution to R&B music. If we be honest, you think about how many how many old R&B videos. They used to, like, they used the, to shout it out, and they used to say it in their songs and shit like that. Had, like, had the Sidekicks in the video, like, the, the title. Like, it was, those were everywhere. Yeah. Might need to bring that back. Hey, Sidekick. And y'all do, I need to be in a commercial first. If they ever bring it back. Yeah. And it's got to be, like, a, like, John, let him write your jingle too. You know what I'm saying? Like, there we go. Fly. Exactly. You feel me? Before we get out of here, because I know you got to go catch this flight. Um, you all said you're, is there? There's gonna be a gospel record on this project. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a gospel record. Um, big shout out to John P. Key. Um, the record is dedicated to my grandmother. Um, first my grandma first for sure. Um, she passed last year. Mm. I think it was last year. It's been a long. Yeah, last year she passed last year, like in June. Yeah, like June. It feel like a long time ago now. You know, we do so much, we move so fast. Yeah. But yeah, it was last year. My grandma passed, but this dedicated her. You know, my grandma was big in church, big dog. My grandma like raised like the whole East Atlanta village. She had a daycare. She ran for like fifteen years, opening, closing every day, cooking the food every day. Like that's what she did. She she was an educator. She loved children. That's what she did. So this song dedicated to her. And then I got a homie I lost to a, one of my homies, little mouse. Um, and I just recently lost one of my homeboys, Skinny Lenny. So it's dedicated to all of them. You know what I'm saying? It's for it's for them. Like, and I feel like at some point you gotta sing for the Lord. At some point, so you know I gotta I gotta give my donation to God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is your donation. Yeah, this is my this is my this for God. He may have not put no money in the basket at church, but he got the record. You know what I'm saying? This for God. <laughs> well, look, man, uh, I'm excited. Oh for- yeah, and I forgot to tell you, Future is executive producer. And I always forget to say that, but. Future is the executive producer of this album. Future is the executive producer of this album. Yes, wow. big shout out to Pluto, man. He's the executive producer of this album. So I'm definitely excited, you know, for everybody to hear that. I'm glad the future was a part. Is he like, uh, so he's like in the studio with you, like helping you pick the records? Like, well, as that? far as picking the records, um, I would say as far as the creative direction. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Creative direction. As far as like putting me with songwriters, mm. producers, different things like that. Like, Future linked me with ATL Jacob. Nice. Um, my boy, um, Pop Lord, different people like that. That was on his side, of, his side of things that he introduced me to. Well, he didn't introduce me to Pop Lord. That was already my boy. But he put us in the studio gotcha. to work, you know. And it gave me a different creative mind, a different creative direction. It's 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 super dope. Like I got a couple records on here. One record that I got is called Steal That. I know they're gonna hear the future in that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you got some little little toxic vibes on there. It's just I'm just spitting. Like it's just I'm just coming with it. It's kind of almost like. You remember when I came out, I came out with like, like I had a record called Like Baby. Mm-hmm. So this one kind of like, it's those type of vibes. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. The creative direction, I'm, we're going to see some very interesting visuals then too. Yeah, definitely. Aside from the documentary. Yeah, yeah, the visuals going to be crazy. Say, so yeah, you know, that was the first visual we yeah. dropped. I had Keep Sweat um, playing like the dad role. Shout out to Keep Sweat, my OG. And uh, just going forward, man, I plan on, you know, having... Other artists, actresses, you know, big name people, big faces that people familiar with, you know, just to make everything just next level. Right, kind of like how we were talking about with that, like enchant, with the bring it back to begin the interview with the, cha- with the exactly. enchant video. Exactly, exactly. Love that man. Well, congrats on everything. Thank you, bro. Um, I can't wait for the project. By the time y'all see this, a new single has been announced. Mm-hmm. Three ATL superstars. You already know what it is: Jacquees, Summer Walker, Black, yeah. all on the same record. Yeah. Um, before we sign off, anything else you want to let your fans know? Where they can follow you at? All that good stuff. This camera right here. Oh, yeah, you already know who it is. Jacquees. Follow me at Jacquees, J-A-C-Q-U-E-E-S, for everybody that can't spell Jacquees. That is I. Follow me right now on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever you got. Everything's the same. Jacquees. Peace and love and respect. Boom. There you go. Go follow him. Go show him love. Go run up that new single. Go run up that album when it's out. Love is free. Support is free. Y'all already knew that. Till next time, Jacquees on the radar. Salute. Love. Love, little bro.